After the defeat of Carthage, Rome could now move throughout the Mediterranean with absolute freedom. The wars with Carthage had taught Rome how to fight multiple battles on all fronts, and Rome would continue to use this skill in the wars to come. Rome secured Greece under the Republic and conquered the rest of Iberia. Rome would then continue its expansion and annexed Asia. A civil war broke out in the province of Numidia, Rome's greatest ally in the wars against Carthage. The civil war pitted two brothers against each other for control of the region. Rome intervened when Jugurtha executed his brother Adderbal as well as Roman citizens. Rome defeated Jugurtha and annexed the country as a client state. But while Rome was growing at an unprecedented rate, nomadic barbarians in the north had arrived at the Republic's doorstep. The massive alliance of tribes that Rome had never seen before stood before the Roman armies under Boyrix, the barbarian king. The Roman army was crushed, and Boyrix moved through the Alps into Gaul, where he was met with the largest Roman army amassed since the Second Punic War. The battle resulted in total Roman annihilation. The Roman generals were conflicted amongst themselves, and Rome lost 120,000 men. Boyrix, however, did not march on Rome after the victory, and instead moved through the Pyrocene Mountains, crushing the armies that Rome threw at him one by one. After raiding northern Iberia, he returned to Rome, where they had prepared a massive army for him. The barbarians were finally defeated and Boyrix was killed. Rome had secured its northern border. However, as Rome continued to dominate outside of Italy, social unrest began to boil from within. Several Italian cities had grown tired of the treatment of the Roman Senate. Italian cities supplied a majority of the Roman men for legions and received very little rights as citizens. When the cities allied together under the man Marcus Livius Drusus to propose to the Senate to give citizenship to all Italian Romans, the idea was rejected and Drusus was executed. This only furthered the Italians' anger, who declared war on Rome. The Allies brought together a massive army of 120,000 men consisting of several individual armies controlled by the Italian tribes. The Allied army initially defeated Rome in several battles, but just as Rome was about to be forced off the cliff, Rome recovered and fended off the traitors. After defeating the Italians, Rome offered full citizenship to every Italian city that did not portray Rome. However, during the Civil War, a man known as Sulla had proved himself to be an admirable general, and was elected as consul after the war had ended. But the bitter old general Marius hated Sulla and attempted to convince the Senate to end Sulla's run as consul. The Senate was sent into chaos and Sulla was forced to flee Rome. Sulla returned with six legions and entered the city. Several of Marius' allies were executed, while the man himself barely managed to escape to Africa, and Sulla was declared dictator. Sulla then sailed to Asia to face the king Mithridates VI, who had been conquering the Roman territory in the province. However, as Sulla fought the foreign war, Marius had amassed an army in Africa and landed in Rome, and with the help of Lucius Cornelius Cinna, took the city and executed everyone loyal to Sulla. After declaring Sulla exiled, he had himself and his ally Cinna elected consuls. Marius died shortly after, and Cinna was left with full control of Rome. An army was sent to Asia to defeat Sulla, but was itself defeated. Cinna was killed in a mutiny in Rome, and Sulla landed his army unopposed in Rome. After crushing the remaining rebels, Sulla was once again instated dictator, and was the first Roman to hold the position of dictator with no limit to the time that that position could last. However, Sulla would forfeit the title and return Rome to the normal consular government, where he ran and was elected. Rome's border began to be pushed eastward, as client states were converted to Roman provinces. And then, Rome saw the creation of an alliance between the three most powerful men in the empire. Julius Caesar, son-in-law of Cinna, allowed to live by Sulla, who later regretted his decision, stating, In this Caesar, there are many Mariuses. Crassus, a general under Sulla during his war against Marius, heralded as the richest man in Rome's history. Pompey, another commander under Sulla, who gave him the title Magnus, or the Great, who defeated Rome's enemies from Iberia to Armenia. These three men formed the Triumvirate. However, the alliance fell into disarray when Crassus, who was off on a campaign against the Parthians, died in a crushing defeat at the Battle of Carrhae. Crassus's death resulted in the Senate allying with Pompey, declaring him the sole consul, while Caesar was ordered to resign from his position in the army. The Senate feared Caesar's political control because the people loved him. Caesar refused and marched with his army of a single legion on Rome. When he crossed the Rubicon River that separated Gaul and Italy, he violated Roman law, thus declaring civil war. As Caesar marched, the legions that were thrown at him by Pompey and the Senate began to flock to his side. The Senate, as well as Pompey, fled to Greece. 
Caesar then ordered his men to march to Hispania and crush Pompey's forces stationed there. When Caesar returned to Rome, he was appointed dictator, with Mark Antony as master of horses or second in command. He kept the title for 11 days and was elected consul once again. Caesar then moved to Illyrium to crush Pompey for good. Pompey's larger army was defeated by Caesar, but Pompey managed to flee to Egypt, where he was assassinated by King Ptolemy XIII. Caesar followed Pompey to Egypt nonetheless, where he was offered the head of Pompey by one of Ptolemy's men. Caesar was saddened, disgusted, and angered by this fact. He then sided with Cleopatra VII, who was in a civil war with Ptolemy. Caesar defeated Ptolemy's army at the Battle of Alexandria and installed Cleopatra as pharaoh. After defeating the rest of Pompey's supporters in Africa and then chasing the fleeing force to Hispania, where he crushed the last remnants of Pompey's supporters, Caesar was then named dictator for eternity and was subsequently assassinated by the Senate. After Caesar's death, the second triumvirate came to power, this time enacted by official Roman law. Octavian, grandnephew and adopted son of Caesar and heir to the power that he held. The only other son of Caesar's was Caesarian, whose mother, Cleopatra, prevented him from being ruler in Roman law due to her foreign blood. Mark Antony, Caesar's trusted general and supporter, and Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, another of Caesar's generals. However, just as the first triumvirate, the second eventually saw tensions grow. Although Caesar gave Octavian power and his will, Mark Antony and Lepidus had allied together to claim themselves the successors to Caesar. Antony refused to acknowledge Octavian, and when Antony denied Octavian the large sum of Caesar's fortune signed to him in Caesar's will, Octavian borrowed money to fulfill the money promised to the army and the people by Caesar. The Roman people began to view Antony as a dictator, and Octavian as the true successor to Caesar. When Antony was given the provinces of Macedonia and Syria to govern, Rather than the Gaul, which had been given to one of Caesar's assassins, Antony marched north against the man. The Senate declared Antony an outlaw. Octavian and two consuls marched to face Antony. Antony's forces were defeated at the Battle of Mutina, but both consuls were killed, leaving Octavian sole commander. Antony escaped along with his lover, Cleopatra, and met Lepidus in Hispania, where Lepidus's men joined with Antony. The Senate began to make moves to put an end to Caesar's successors, giving control of the army to the remaining descendants of Pompey, and relinquished Octavian from his command. However, the men under him refused to follow Caesar's enemies and remained under Octavian. Octavian allied with Antony to provide a unified front against the enemies of Caesar and marched on Rome, easily taking the city. Octavian made himself consul and made the descendants of Pompey outlaws. He then traveled to Gaul to meet Antony, where the triumvirate discussed the matter of rule. They agreed to divide the empire amongst themselves, and to unify, to put down the remainder of Caesar's assassins. Mark Antony and Octavian crushed the enemy at the Battle of Philippi. Mark would set off against the Parthian Empire, with the aid of Cleopatra's Egypt. However, the Romans were crushed. With more aid from Cleopatra, Antony successfully invaded Armenia, and declared his allegiance with Octavian finished. The two men met at sea to decide the fate of Rome at the Battle of Actium. Octavian's fleet, commanded by Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, crushed the combined forces of Antony and Cleopatra. The two lovers fled to Egypt, but Octavian gave chase and invaded. With nowhere to escape and with what seemed like the whole world against them, Mark Antony committed suicide. Cleopatra would commit suicide soon after Octavian captured Egypt. Octavian took the title of Pharaoh and ordered the death of Caesarion, son of Cleopatra and Caesar, stating that two Caesars are one too many. Octavian then slowly took more and more power in Rome, as the most powerful man in the world. The Senate would give Octavian the title Augustus, meaning illustrious one. Augustus had become the first Roman emperor. Stay tuned next episode for the Roman Empire. <laughs>